الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون ثم أما بعد All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations be upon the last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O you who have believed, fear Allah as you should be feared and do not die except in the state of Islam My brothers and sisters, I have a question for you all When we are educating our children And we're encouraging them to pray Do we come with the approach that if you don't pray Then Allah will throw you in Jahannam or are we individuals that say that when you pray, Allah will grant you Jannah? There's a major difference between how we educate one to love Islam, to love this religion. The scholar said that on the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believer flies with the wings of hope and the wings of fear. And if one of them is exposed, then this person will crash. They will not be able to fly to Allah. For an individual that has too much fear, always concerned about making sure that they do wudu a hundred times because maybe there's a possibility that they left an area that was not washed. Always concerned about, you know, exactly where do my hands need to be proportioned and concerned about every minor, 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 minor detail to the point that it drives them insane. This could be detrimental to one's iman. And from the other extreme, a person that has too much hope that, oh, Allah will forgive me, I will do whatever I want and Allah will forgive me. When you fly to Allah, you have the balance of hope and fear. And inshallah, on today's khutbah, I want to speak about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we are individuals that fall in love with Islam, that when we hear about the punishment, we love Allah so much that we fear to displease Him. In my favorite verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ That He is the all-forgiving and the all-loving. What a beautiful verse. Short in Surah Al-Baruj, but beautiful the way that it is paired. وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ That He is the all-forgiving and the all-loving. You and I have someone that comes to us and they wrong us. At first, they approach you and you're like, they, ask, they tell you they're sorry and you're like, man, how can I forgive you? And there's that, even when you forgive them, there's that ounce in your heart that every time you see them, your heart is like a broken glass. Where there's a part that is broken that you must, you wronged me one time. You know, your kid comes up to you and accidentally, you know, throws something at you and hits you in your head. You're like, Ugh. you get that ounce of anger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Ghafur, if you knock on the door of repentance, Al Ghafur answers that door and forgives you. And Al Wadud, he remains loving you because you turn to him in repentance. Wid, love. This word Al Wadud, it comes from the root word Wid, which means a pure form of love. The purest form of love. And Allah Al Wadud loves you. He loves you so much that if you were to take a thousand steps away from Allah, it only takes one step to walk towards Him. For the hadith mentions, he وسلم, has said that if a person takes one step towards Allah, Allah will take ten steps towards Him. And if Allah, if, if, if uh, you go to Allah walking, Allah will come to you at speed. Allah loves you. And we need to understand that Allah loves us. And we need to understand how to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, subhanAllah, Allah has placed things in our life that we love, right? A child loves their toy, their blanket, their video games. They love their phone. SubhanAllah, we love the way that the moon looks. No matter how old it is, it's beautiful every time you look at it. It's different every time you look at it. When your eyes gaze upon it, it is gorgeous, SubhanAllah. The things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in this world shows and proves that Allah loves us. That He created for us a Jannah. It proves that Allah loves us. But when you strive to earn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love, 
something beautiful happens in return. It's mentioned in a hadith that he sallallahu alayhi wa has said that if Allah has loved a person, and I want you to imagine this, my brothers and sisters, imagine this moment. This is a conversation between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Angel Jibreel. In where? The heavens. This is a conversation in the heavens with Jibreel and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Jibreel, who spoke with the messengers, he says, I love so and so, therefore love them. And in the heavens, your name will be uttered to Jibreel. I love Khadijah. I love Maryam. I love Ahmed. I love Muhammad. And Jibreel, the angel Jibreel will love you. Then he will go to the inhabitants of Jannah and will pronounce that Allah loves so and so, therefore love them. And the angels will love you. Prophet Ayyub it's mentioned that they were conversing about the angels were conversing and Iblis heard and it was mentioned who is the most honorable person in this in this dunya right now and it was Ayyub. They were talking about Ayyub. Can you imagine the angels knowing your name and when your soul goes into the into Jannah, into the heavens and they're calling you, oh what a beautiful soul this person is, what a beautiful soul this person is. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst the souls. And Jibreel will tell the angels and the angels will love you. Then love is established in this dunya. Because you've earned the love of Allah, your relationship with your spouse, your children, your co-workers, everyone is now better. Why? Because you've earned the love of Allah. Through what? Through following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best of mankind. Allah says in the Quran, He says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ Say, O Muhammad, if you should love Allah, if you should love Allah, then follow me and Allah will love you and forgive you. Can you imagine that? You following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you earn the love of Allah. You earn the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ Do you love Allah? Of course. Not even, a, not even a question of a doubt. Of course you love Allah, right? And you ask some people, do you love your wife? Of course I love my wife. And you ask your wife, does your husband love you? Like really think about this. Do you, when you say you love your children, and you talk about how amazing your children are, but when it comes to educating them, spending time with them, you're on your phone. You're nowhere to be found. You'd rather pick your friends over your kids. When it comes to your spouse, do you abuse them? Do you yell at them? Do you curse at them? Do you even show love? When it comes to saying, oh, I love my mother. But when it comes to private, in closed doors, and it's just you and her, and you're yelling and you're telling her all these disrespectful things. On the surface, on our tongue, we love Allah. But in our hearts, do we love Allah? We love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's not one Muslim that will say that they don't. But when it comes to having to choose between eating that fifth donut that you ate versus following the sunnah of Alhamdulillah, I'm satisfied. And that donut looks pretty good, a little bit of sprinkles, I don't know. And you eat it, but it's better, to, it's better, it's, it's sunnah, it's okay. Alhamdulillah, give it up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is pure love. Because when the sahaba found out that something was sunnah, they didn't say, it's just sunnah bro. They said, Alhamdulillah, it's sunnah, so I will. If you should love Allah, then follow me. And Allah loves you. When you make a dua, Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say the Muslim that calls out to me. He doesn't say the one that has sinned that when he calls out to me, I respond to that call. Any person that calls Allah, Allah will answer Only you have to be the one that initiates the call. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, When my servant asks you, O Muhammad, concerning me, that he says, He is near. It doesn't matter if you are a sinner. It doesn't matter if you've rejected Allah. It doesn't matter if you've chose your own desires over what Allah loves. All that matters is you're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do 
how did he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I want you to imagine, you know, you have a relationship with someone, right? Yeah, you call someone at 10 o'clock at night, you're st you lose track of time. I love this person so much. You go to your boys, man, I love this car. I love whatever you love. Think of what you love the most. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that mention Allah to yourself and Allah will mention him to himself. Mention Allah in a gather mention Allah in a gathering and Allah will mention you in a gathering far much more larger. Can you imagine the last time you talked to your friend about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Man, I gotta tell you this miracle, subhanAllah, that happened to me the other day. Allahu Akbar, Allah was protecting me. Like when was the last time you just you know, when you love someone, you talk about them. When you love someone, when you love something, you spend time with them. When you love them, do you how did he sallallahu alayhi wa prove that he loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When the entire world was sleeping, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mentioned in the hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you know, this is just one episode of love, one relationship. There were times where I would speak for hours, sometimes just, you know, I'm at work, just text messaging, literally wake up and I've been text messaging this person that I love all day, and not even getting bored of it. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's mentioned that it was as if a bucket of water was poured on his head. His beard was drenched in tears. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's mentioned that he made a dua every time he would get to a verse talking about Jannah. He would say, oh Allah grant me Jannah. And every time he got to a verse of Jahannam, he would say, oh Allah save me from Jahannam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He made this dua. He turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his prayers and he says, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but you Allahumma anta nuru samawati wal ard, oh Allah. You are the light of the heavens and the earth, and all praise belongs to you. Lakul ham. Allahumma anta haq wa jannatu haq wa naru haq wa nabiyuna haq wa muhammadu haq. That the jannah is true, and jahannam is true, and the prophets are true, and Muhammad is true. And he cried out to Allah, and he said, The prophets are true. Oh Allah, I submit to you and I accept. I accept, Ya Allah. I accept you and I trust in you and I turn to you and I agree by you and I summon to you for judgment and to you I complain, forgive me for what I have sent before me and what I have left behind, what I have kept in secret and what I have made public. You are my God, you are my first and my last. La ilaha illa an. There is no God but you. Ask yourself this question. Do you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make a dua where you just pour your heart out to Him? That even though He knows the black ant on a black stone in the blackest part of the night. That he knows your worries and your concerns. That you raise your hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tears. Telling him of all the pain and all the hurt and all the concerns and everything that you've had. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love us and to allow us to love him. Inshallah, I want to close on a, 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 a three things, inshallah. First off, is ask yourselves this question. If you want to know how much you love Allah, when you have the something that you desire versus something that Allah is pleased with, if you have something that Allah is, it will be displeased with and something that will please Allah, ask yourself what you choose. If you have the opportunity to do halal, do you do that halal because you know Allah will be pleased with it? Or do you do the haram because you know that it's something that your 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 nafs wants? You know, do you when it's time to pray, do you just say it's okay? It's okay, I'll just pray later. Even though He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that the best of prayer, the best prayer is the one that is done at its time that it's entered. So inshallah I want to close the second thing is what a scholar said are 10 things that can bring you the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out. First, and again, do the bare minimum. Okay, start with, if you're not doing nothing, at least do the bare minimum. A scholar has said that set the bar as the bare minimum. And if your heart can desire more, do more. Right? Read one letter of the Qur'an a day. At least open the Qur'an one time a day. And if your heart can say, I'll read another, a whole verse, read the verse. But let the, the bare minimum be something that you can do every day. 
he said, number one, reciting Quran. Number two, voluntary acts. Number three, constant dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four, Allah's love over your own desires. Number five, knowing who Allah is. Number six, witnessing His blessing and His mercy. Number seven, the heart's defeat and humility in front of Allah. Number eight, praying qiyam al layl. Number nine, sitting with the truthful ones. And number ten, keeping distant from anything and everything that will come in between the heart and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask yourselves, my brother and sister, if there's one thing that you can do today to earn Allah's love, what could it be? And do it. Go out and be an individual that does one thing that when you put your head on the pillow, you can say, I think I may have earned Jannah from this one deed. And if I didn't, then wake up, pray qiyam, go to bed in wudu, read Surah Al-Mulk, do one thing that if you were to die that moment, you could at least say Alhamdulillah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love us, to allow us to love Him, to allow us to strive to, for, his, for, for, for Him to be happy with us, and for us to be individuals that are in the highest level of Jannah. رب الفلي والمسلمين والمسلمات على حياة الموات اللهم إني أسألك إيمان في الدنيا والآخرة وتوفى المسلمين اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وآتنا في من عفيت وتولنا في من تولّيت وبارك لنا في من عطيت ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة 